Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, this week I want to show you a fun little gift. Um, I made a bunch of these for uh, the market I did last weekend and they actually did quite well. It's just a simple little, you know, pencil case. People can, you know, fit a toothbrush in there. You could even fit a couple of leather tools or something if you do, you know, travel for markets and things like that to kind of keep things easy and in <laughs> your disposal. And it's just an easy little snap together pouch. But it, it is quite cute. I did get a lot of compliments on it. And I just wanted to share quickly how I made this it. This is actually quite, quite an easy pattern to sort of sort out on your own. Um, you can actually scale it down and stuff too. So I'm just giving you kind of like a rough outline. Literally. Um, I'm just <laughs> using the edge of a chapstick or lip balm or whatever. Uh, just to come up with a radius for the edges here. Of course, if you have, I usually just end up freehanding them, but if you have those little circle guides or whatever, those are also very handy. And you're just going to cut those out with your X-Acto knife. And then you just need a few holes for your snaps or um you can also you can also you know give this a strap closure or just like a little wrap around sort of piece of lace or whatever too that would also look very cool and then you don't have to use snaps at all but um as far as hole placement goes to create that triangle what i've done is i will go from the top about three quarters of an inch and you want to make sure to mark your spacing in more than just two places. Sometimes what happens if you're, you know, a little bit off or whatever, um, you might not be able to notice, but if you have three lines, you're connecting those three lines to get your nice straight line. Um, from there, I go in one and a quarter inch. And this is going to give me where I place my holes for the snaps. And just right in the pattern there, I'll just punch the holes. And this way, when you're lining up your leather piece, you can just kind of press your little hole punch through and you've got nice evenly spaced holes if you've done everything right with your little pattern. This is also such an easy project too. You can just do all this marking out on your leather, but it is nice to have this handy. It's a lot quicker than marking out each individual one. When I uh, did the production on these, I think I did, I did 12 of them in about one day of work. So you can kind of, you know, batch your tasks get going in a way that you are doing all of one step for every single one. So, you know, once you've got your 12 cut, you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna burnish your edges, or most of your edges, you're gonna punch all your holes for your snaps. If that's the route you choose to go. And it does speed things up quite a bit, so. There's that piece, and then we just need a little scrap here to make this little sort of edge piece, and it's just a little square. So you're just gonna make a little two and a half inch square and give it the same radius on two sides as you did the front of your piece there. And so I know some people use their mats and stuff. Um, I find mine is a little bit on the inaccurate side, so I prefer just to use a ruler. Just for the sake of accuracy. I know there's better mats out there. Mine's getting a little hard to read too. I've beat it up a fair bit. It's seen a lot of dye and deglazer and things like that on it so it could just be time for a new one for me okay 
so that's going to be my little two and a half inch square. And you can just lay down the piece you just made to trace out your edges. There you go, quick, simple, little two-piece pattern. And again, like I said, you can scale it down if you want to make smaller ones. You can make it quite a bit larger if you wanted, you know, something a bit bigger, like sort of a dot kit size or whatever. I just chose the eight and a half by 11, one for the ease of the pattern, and two, just because it did yield uh, the perfect size for the stuff that I needed to fit in here. And, you know, it's just nice, easy measurements. But we'll get on to the leather cutting part. For this project, I use I like to use a little bit of a lighter uh, temper and weight leather. Um, this is a three to four ounce. It's a Horween, I think it's like, I can't remember the name of it. Um, but I did get it from OA Leather Supply. It's a really, really nice, nice vegetable tan leather. Um, they do have a lot of really great pieces or leather options that come in a three to four ounce and they're really good about doing videos and listing the tempers and whatnot of their leathers they have available so check them out i'll link them below super great place to shop really really wonderful family-owned business so as I said before, you can just use your little uh, hole punch to kind of mark out your holes there. Um, I did forget to mention this distance here is three and a quarter inches. So three quarters of an inch, three and a quarter inches, one and a quarter, one and a quarter, one and a quarter, one and a quarter. That's it. <laughs> so I will go ahead and cut that out. There is also little small bits to do, which I like to just use little off cuts and scraps to get those out of. Make sure you're using as much of your hide as you can. And with these, I'll usually cut down a little more reasonable size to work with. And then you can either just use your ruler or you can freehand. I've been cutting things with <laughs> X-Acto knives for a very long time, so I can cut a very straight line. I think I've mentioned it before. One tip I like to give is you really want to lock your wrist and your elbow. And you're using... Kind of your body and your shoulder to drag your knife along you're not you know bending your wrist in a weird way <laughs> it's kind of hard for well it's hard for me to describe i'm sure there's somebody out there that has a perfect explanation of it back when i was still metal fabricating we just call it robot arm and it's a technique you'd use with grinders and things like that you know to grind out scratches and put nice finishes on metal, but I use the exact same technique for cutting nice straight lines. And it does, like I said, it takes a little bit of practice. But if you've got some time, you've got some scrap, go for it. Or even do it on paper, just chuck it in the recycling after. So 
one other piece I did forget about is I like to put little washers into these little bags just because the leather is a bit on the thinner side and it is a snap closure so it's going to get a lot of you know wear and tear put on it. I just use a three quarter inch round punch and uh, just kind of eyeball you don't really nobody's going to be paying attention if these are off a little bit. Just find your center and there you go. Super quick, super easy. That just goes um, into your snaps, which I will show you when it comes time to set those. So just make four of those little guys. Um, sometimes when I do have, <laughs> I almost said downtime, there's never any of that, but you could essentially make a whole bunch of these, you know, if you're going through scraps and stuff. Make yourself a little bit of a backstock. So once you have everything cut and punched, uh, what I would suggest is this large flat edge and these two smaller ones get beveled um, and finished. So whatever your preferred method, I'm just going to edge bevel them, hit them with a little bit of tokenol, and that should be good. If you prefer the more kind of like rugged, sort of rustic look, that's also very cool too. And you can just skip this step. It doesn't take a whole lot. Just get a nice little smooth edge on there. Okay, once that's all done, you're ready to set your snaps in. Um, super simple. Obviously, you're going to want your little the ones at the top here to be the more decorative side. And I know this is like not the most conventional way to set snaps, but it's just a classic case of working with what I got. So, <laughs> there we go. And you're just gonna continue on with your other one. Just get on there nice and quick. Okay, and you want to make sure when you're setting these ones, you're setting them to the exterior because it's going to fold back around and it's going to clip onto itself. Um, don't make the same mistake I did and set a whole bunch of them to the inside because that's just going to cause a lot of headaches <laughs> and it's going to mean you're going to have to clip a bunch of your snaps out. There we go. You can even test those out if you would like. Let's make sure they're going the right way. Yeah, they're looking good. So next step, all we have left to do is to punch our stitching holes and 
stitch these all together. So with this one, um, again, I just wanted to keep it something that's kind of quick and smooth to do. So there's actually no gluing. Um, I found just punching and stitching these without glue was sufficient enough for me. If you'd prefer to glue them, that is also a-okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hang one tooth over and just start punching the entire distance around here. Once you hit those curves, you're going to want to switch over to a smaller tooth, obviously. And once you get to the other side, you should be landing with one tooth off as well. So from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to count how many holes I did around here, which I should have been keeping track of while I was doing it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and punch that number plus one onto this half here. So I've gone ahead, I figured out I need 43 holes on this length here. So with the stitching irons I'm using, that works out to be five full with the one tooth overlap. And then I just need three extras on top of that. And there we go. We're ready to start stitching. All right, once you're all ready to go, grab your thread. And I like to just do for something like this with leather that's a little bit on the thinner side, I'll just do the little four times plus a touch rule. I like to try and keep my consumption of things like thread and stuff um, as accurate as possible, just to sort of try to, you know, save a little money where you can. Um, this is just Ritz of Tiger, uh, 0.8 millimeter. Um, I'm just threading it, locking it into place. And I'll show you how to get started, and uh, you guys can all take it from there. <laughs> you don't need to watch me stitch this entire thing, but once you kind of get into the groove of it, they're really quick. You can get through them quite, quite quickly, and that's what makes this such a nice, like, it's a good gift if you have an artist friend or a pal that travels a lot. You know, like I said, they could put toothbrushes, toiletries, and what have you into them for safekeeping. So you're just going to line up this side. You're going to want it to, you know, of course, roll in like that, right? So this part goes to the inside. And I'll just use little alligator clips just to kind of hold it in place. Um, I prefer to stitch without a pony. I learned quarter leathers, leapfrog method. Um, yeah, go check him out to learn how to do it. It's super simple. And the thing I like about it most is I got to spend some time stitching in a hammock this summer because you don't need to be standing at a table behind a stitching pony to be able to do it. I know it took me a little bit of getting used to it first, but once you get used to it, I find I actually stitch a lot faster using this method than I ever did using a pony. It's also really nice for like bags and things too that are maybe a little more awkward that you maybe can't clamp into a stitching pony. So the one reason I also <clears throat> like to do this out of a stitching pony as well is once you get up to these little corners 
what you're going to do is you're going to manipulate them a little bit as you stitch. And they're going to start to create that nice little boxy corner. And what you can do too is you can actually go ahead and get back in there with your little clip. And just have that kind of hold it in place for you. And because you haven't glued it, you're gonna have the freedom to kind of manipulate it and move it around and get it lining up real nice for you so when you come back in and you want to do your edge finishing these would also look really cool if you edge painted them too like a fun contrasting color or something but as you can see it just travels along and you get that nice edge you could use a lighter or i like these little max wax pens um i used to use these back when i was a jeweler and they just last forever. Traditionally they're used for sculpting wax forms to be cast into metal. I've tried those little thread zap ones and I've went through two in less than a week so these are just a little more heavy duty. They're available at uh, just a jewelry supply store. Some craft stores have them. I'm just going to go ahead and hammer these out nice and lightly, help you build the shape a little, and there you go. So I'm just going to repeat that on the other side, um, then we're going to sand these up and it's all done. It's a quick little, I'd say, you know, half hour, 45 minute craft, once you kind of get rolling and if you do a bunch at the same time, you're going to save even more time. There we have it. All that's left to do is edging. So what I would do, I'm not gonna bore you all with that, <laughs> is I would bevel all the way around these guys and just edge finish as normal. But yeah, quick, easy, beautiful little project, great little gift and done in way less than an hour. So there you have it. Thank you for joining in today and uh, let me know what you think. If you wanna see more sort of projects like this, if you'd prefer I cover more tooling and stuff, uh, let me know. Drop a like and a follow and uh, we'll talk to y'all soon.